the boys of Belfast town are ranting, roaring, rambling round. We're Irish men of high renown. That's the boys of Belfast. Well, listen, let's talk a little bit about the connection that the Irish Rovers have to Buffalo because your origins in Toronto, I mean, quite honestly, Toronto we look at as, uh, as a friendly neighbor to the north. But my guess is you've been to Buffalo many, many times. Well, exactly. When we first uh, immigrated from uh, from Belfast, we all landed, like you say, in Toronto. And Buffalo was just a natural place for us to play as well. So we did in the early days, there was folk clubs all around uh, between Toronto and Buffalo. There was two or three good places we would play. And then when we got a bit more uh, known with the Unicorn, then of course we used to play a lot in Tonawanda. They had a big tent, one of those big round um, performing tents in the summer. We used to do quite a bit of that. So, and I think the fact that the CBC TV show is sort of stole across the border there so they could watch it as well. Well, and there's a great Irish-American uh, community in western New York, um, and I'm, I'm half Irish myself, and uh, I know that when I'm with my Irish friends, it's, uh, it's, always, it's always a party, no matter what. And uh, my guess is your music, well, you know, your music brings that out. Well, you know, it does, and I think it, it goes back ages and ages when the Irish didn't have much, and um, they, of course, in, when I was growing up, there was no televisions and, or computers, so you made your own music, and I think that's where it all stems from. The, the Irish have always been a, a race of people who love their music and they love their storytelling and that's how um, they talk about the Saturday night parties in Newfoundland and all well that they stole it from the Irish for God's sake that's where it started George talk about the the members of the Irish Rovers you've been together a long time we have this is our 48th year we're going into now and um, I started the band when I was 16 years old in Toronto. We had just come out from Ireland, and I met Jimmy Ferguson, who had also just come out from Ireland. And so we've been together a long time. And our cousin Joe, he came out a year after I did. He joined the band immediately because I knew that he was a good singer and he could play. So when I met him at the play, and I said, you're in a band. And he said, OK. So Joe retired about 10 years ago, and his son Ian took over his spot. So we've sort of kept it in the family. and. Um, Jimmy sadly passed away a few years ago. My brother Will retired from the band about 18 years ago, but we continue, and uh, Wilson and I are still the original members. Wilson is the accordion player, and um, we've been together, well, 48 years. So it's just, uh, we keep saying we'll give it one more year and see how it goes. Well, you know, as, as you've endured many, many years, obviously, and, uh, you know, as, as musical acts go, yours is, is such a niche, but, but you're, you really you find great success because audiences across the globe really relate to those stories and relate to the to, to the music. They do indeed, and I think uh, part of it is um, we've never been a political band. We don't take any sort of political sides, and I don't bring that to the stage. We just, um, our philosophy is give them two hours of a bit of fun and let people, if they can leave whistling the drunken sailor, then we've done our jobs correctly. And we have fun on stage, so that goes across to the audience and I think if you see bands who are, don't particularly like each other well you can tell immediately that they're not gelling on stage so the fact that we um, we love the music we're doing it's our heritage and we like each other a lot so you put those two things together and it seems to work and um, I suppose I wouldn't change it at this time after 48 years it seems to work what will audiences expect at the Riviera Theatre in North Tonawanda? Obviously the Unicorn and the Drunken Sailor, but uh, what else will they uh, be uh, enjoying? Well, uh, on, we're, uh, we're getting close to retirement. Over the next couple of years, we're going to retire. So we have been redoing some of the older songs that people have always wanted, like Lily the Pink and Yes, the Black Velvet Band and Wasn't That a Party and the Orange and the Green. Um, it's, we won't sing Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer because that's only on our Christmas tour. So other than that, they're going to hear most of the songs that they'll recognize from the TV show and from our old days in Tonawanda. Yeah, that uh, theater you were talking about is Melody Fair. It's no longer there now. It's a, I, I believe it's a store. Of, I think it's a Walmart or something. But uh, have you ever, have you ever performed at the Riviera Theater before? I, I think we have about five or six years ago. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure we did. But we used to love that tent. They, they, boy, the the acts there were treated like royalty, and they would have a great spread of fruit and cheeses and we had a really nice dressing area it's too bad it's become a walmart but that seems to be the woes of the world right now doesn't it well that said uh you know the riviera theater is a, a great intimate and historic theater and uh and my guess is that you'll be there selling dvds as well and uh, and cds 
yes, uh, they, we usually bring some CDs and things with us, and I think they've even got T-shirts this time around. So we'll um, we'll have all of that with us. And uh, since we're not in too many stores, um, we bring a good selection of CDs in case they haven't, uh, if they've missed our last three or four CDs that we've been doing. So that's what we do. Now we're almost up to St. Patrick's Day, so we'll have to end the interview with maybe some uh, sage Irish um, advice that you would want to offer our, our viewers. I think that there's one of the Irish sayings which is very true, and what it is is it says if you come to Ireland or if you meet a bunch of people, they say there are no strangers here, just friends you haven't met yet. So that's probably one of our philosophies. Well, we'll experience that at the Riviera Theatre March 6th, and George, our best to, to the Irish Rovers. We'll see you soon. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate that. And for the ones we don't see at the show, wish them a very uh, happy St. Patrick's Day for us. Mary Hutter, whatever you do, then stay short and happy be far away from the deep blue sea. Come on. The deep blue sea.